I'm Nicholas Herzog. I'm at Microsoft. Uh, since seven and a half years, I'm here as an account executive taking care of my customer Bühler, amongst others. And I'm here with Burkhard Bendel, uh, head of corporate communications. And uh, it's in the context of the industrial metaverse event. And uh, we are here to elaborate a little bit what's going on with the Bühler virtual world. Thanks for having me, Niklas. So, um, welcome, Burkhardt. And maybe you can share a bit about yourself and your role at Bühler first to get started with. Well, I'm uh, leading the corporate communication department at Bühler. I'm now with the company since 10 years. And I, my area of responsibility covers from branding, communication, content generation. And in this specific situation, and we come to this in a minute, uh, when we wanted to go to a trade show, also to develop new tools with which we can communicate with our customers. Right, exactly. And we just saw you on stage, yeah. uh, fantastic performance. Thank you. You presented the Bühler Virtual World. So what's the story behind the Bühler Virtual World? So you will definitely remember the Corona days and weeks and months 2020. Uh, we plan to go to an international large trade show in Düsseldorf in May 2020 and uh, beginning of the year Corona hit uh, the globe and in February we took the decision to not to go to the trade show. It was obvious that this event cannot happen and then we took the decision to exactly at the time where we wanted to go physically we will come up with a virtual alternative. So not to lose customer interaction uh, and, and collaboration and talks with the customers. So that gave us around 10 weeks to transform the physical booth uh, and the exhibits and everything we wanted to uh, talk about into a virtual environment. Uh, luckily, we decided from the very beginning to put this into a gaming engine environment, which gave us then later on a big uh, flexibility to, mm -hmm. to develop it further uh, and exactly at this time where the trade show should have happened we had 10,000 people registered for the event globally and we had then around 1,500 direct customer talks in individual meetings uh, and that was a huge success and from one more than 2,000 exhibitors we have been the only one coming up with an alternative exactly at that time. Amazing. And, and is there any, I mean, you mentioned it was a full success, so yeah. uh, impressing, impressive numbers we saw also. Um, any story you remember, maybe a customer feedback or yeah. you know, some, some uh, feedback you received from your customers on, on that setup in incredible 10 weeks, I believe. Yeah. Now, there are a lot of anecdotes you can imagine. Uh, <laughs> Uh, one was that we had a partner who should uh, come to Utsville uh, with specific environments. So we built up a, a green screen, a large green, sc green studio in, at our premises. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a few weeks before the event should have taken place, the borders were closed between Switzerland mm -hmm. and Germany. Yeah. So we were able to get a specific permission by the Swiss government that mm -hmm. at least a few guys from our partner could come over. So we, we were really pioneering on many in, in, in many aspects um, and also due to that a lot of learnings and one learning was that it is not only a substitution what you can do virtually but you can compose meetings and collaboration in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, so normally imagine you would have had the trade show customer come maybe with a little group of a few people, you have a few people, you go in the meeting room for one or two hours, that's it. No? Mm -hmm. Now we discovered that you can compose a meeting because it's virtually completely different. You can bring in people from different parts of the world, maybe mm -hmm. for just half an hour. So we had then meetings which took place four hours or so, mm -hmm. but in a different composition, you touch in the meeting on different aspects. Now you bring in this, as this, this, this person. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and this was also um, the fascinating thing. Um, and we also experienced then after we could have physical meetings again that mm -hmm. also it's n never ever we will only have virtual meetings mm -hmm. but it's really important to figure out where are you much more efficient mm -hmm. virtually and where it is also really important that you come together mm -hmm. physically. Mm -hmm. So 
very good point that brings me to now the pandemic is over, yeah. luckily. Uh, we're all, let's say, back to normal. Yeah. Um, but the build of each world is still still here. Yeah. So what was what were the reasons that motivated to uh, keep uh, that focus on the virtual world? You just elaborated a little bit the hybrid aspects mm. and, and, and probably a new way how to interact with customers also that that gained some strength mm -hmm. since the pandemic. But uh, what, what are the key drivers now behind the Bula Virtual World um, going forward? Now, also you have to remember that uh, Corona and also our customer interaction didn't stop then after the event, right? So we had mm -hmm. to bridge a much longer period. Mm -hmm. So we had then several events in the, in the virtual world. And then we also decided that we will develop a real a real virtual world because in the first the first virtual world was very much a one-to-one -one tr transformation of the physical booth so we also use the booth data imagine 10 weeks now the only chance you have to build something up you take existing data mm -hmm. and then but then we thought okay why why limiting this virtual experience to a room huh? why not widening up and then we said okay we need to go in, into a let's say unlimited landscape modus huh? mm -hmm. That was that was one. Then the second reason was that that uh, also this uh, trade show was focusing on on the food industry and also specific parts of our food industry. We said no, we need to mirror our complete business in the virtual world. Um, so we put a lot of effort into into it. We, when, then we changed the data model. The first data model we have developed. We put all the content into one data model, which was then very heavy, twenty giga. Uh, about heavy, not flexible, not really easy to maintain. Then we really deconstructed it in, like a puzzle, and we put it together then in a different way. Uh, yeah, and then we then we saw okay, this this is really something which we should uh, continuously develop develop further. Definitely, in the time when Corona was was around, that was a key tool to maintain and to continue customer. Communication. After that, uh, we then had uh, a phase where people were absolutely tired of any kind of virtual experience. Just they wanted to go back to to, to physical meetings, and we are still a little bit in this phase. No? Uh, but I'm pretty sure that, that that we and also the rest of the world is rediscovering then, and then we will see a different kind of of setup. Um, and we also discovered that. Uh, the virtual world, the Bula virtual world, has the potential of becoming a multi-purpose tool. Not so, not only sales and selling, but HR. Mm -hmm. Imagine you want to introduce the company mm -hmm. to somebody who doesn't know Bula, and you have now the possibility to show in a 3D environment, in a gaming environment. I mean, completely different mm -hmm. impression you make as a company or training. Now, so we have a lot of 3D models in the system. Now, today, people come to us uh, for physical trainings. Now you can do at least a part of this training already in a, in a virtual environment. Uh, so there are many, many benefits we mm -hmm. figured out. Currently, we are in a phase of re-evaluating re how the way will be forward, but mm -hmm. definitely we will continue mm -hmm. working on that. Fantastic. Um, so we saw a lot also this morning uh, about industrial metaverse with a strong focus on mm. engineering collaboration. Now, yeah. A Bula with the virtual world, you take a slightly different angle coming from communications, yeah. right? So your department. So um, focusing on the benefits you see there, what yeah. do you think are the strengths of such a virtual world uh, in communication, in sales specifically? And, and maybe as a second part, um, do you see also potential then looking towards engineering? Yes. Um, so coming from the communication and marketing perspective, uh, this tool and these technologies, they offer a, a fantastic new way of storytelling. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and specifically if you're working in a, in a global environment and you also want to ensure that your colleagues in Indonesia, the Philippines, South Africa, China, I don't know where, they, they basically tell a little bit the same story. Uh, you have, mm -hmm. let's say, put together from a corporate perspective. Now, with these this, with these kind of tools, you can really ensure a consistency in storytelling, and um, and also because you you can you can bring the content 
so this is also what we have done technically. We, 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 we connected the gaming engine with a content management system. Now imagine you really put all the relevant content into this content management system and link it to the virtual world. Now, this gives you endless options to, 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 for storytelling in different ways. Now you're talking to somebody who is not familiar with Bühler, then you select these kind of elements of the storytelling. Now you're talking to somebody of the die casting industry or the milling industry, then you put the focus there because you have all the content in. You have now somebody's coming more from the engineering side, then you go a, a level deeper. Huh? So it, it really depends what kind of content you put in the, into the platform, but mm -hmm. once the content is in the platform, mm -hmm. it gives you endless, endless opportunities and, and, and potential. And what we have done that people do not get lost, we created uh, so-called guided tours. Mm -hmm. And like you switch uh, through a PowerPoint presentation, you just click and then, the, then, the, then, the, uh, then you jump automatically uh, to the, to the um, point uh, you want to now talk about. But at any point in time, you are free to uh, make an extra tour in another direction. Then you go back to your, uh, to your mm -hmm. virtual, uh, 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 to the guided tour. Mm -hmm. So the flexibility and the richness of the content is, is immense. And also you can bring in any kind of content you can bring in classical text, you can bring in animations, videos, whatsoever. So mm -hmm. it's really, mm -hmm. really uh, mm -hmm. immense what you can do. Incredible. So, I mean, you touched a little bit up on this. So you give this guidance so that people don't get lost because mm -hmm. it's quite a new way to communicate Absolutely. and to sell, right? So what are the challenges that you observe at Bühler uh, with a Bühler virtual world and, mm -hmm. and how to bring this also to your Salesforce and mm -hmm. your people at Bühler? I think there are, there are uh, three main challenges uh, um, you have to consider and also the challenges we are working on. Uh, one is a technical challenge. The real power of this kind of metaverse application you only can unleash when you connect that into your IT landscape. Huh? You want to avoid a standalone isolated system because this will never ever mid to long term fly. Mm. And you have, you have a CRM system, you have engineering systems, you have a product, uh, um, product uh, information systems, you have... Con uh, I mean, uh, and where is now the single source of truth mm. for this specific kind of data? Because the virtual world is a playout channel, like a website, like uh, it's a playout channel. Mm -hmm. But where are the, the data you, you show, where are they, uh, where's the leading system in which they are? And the better you connect that, uh, the more flexible and the more efficient are you. No? So mm -hmm. this is one, one key aspect. Mm -hmm. um, the other aspect is, um, and this was the, then uh, also what, what we have maybe underestimated if you want to bring this to full blossom, you need, you, you need to realize that this requires a change in the processes and behavior in, in many cases. Now. So if somebody is in the engineering department, uh, he, he, he needs to engineer, uh, in, not differently, but he needs to take a few uh, things into account to make the export of the models into the virtual into these virtual worlds much easier yeah? it's like i mean I'm, I'm i'm as an old guy i'm coming from the printing uh, era and then you create a printable pdf now you, if, mm -hmm. if you do a design you can do this from the very beginning in a way that creating the printable pdf is very easy it's more a side product or if you now have the design you start from scratch making the printable pdf mm -hmm. the same with engineers so engineers need to, to to understand what is required when i want to have a 3d model for visualization mm -hmm. reasons, not for manufacturing reasons. Mm -hmm. One point. Uh, then the communication guys, they also have to understand that the content I bring into this virtual world must be different than, I, I'm not producing a brochure anymore. I don't have a, a website. Uh, this is, requires a different approach. Right? And then the sales guys, they need to, they need to uh, really get, if they want to use it as a sales tool, they need to get familiar with the tool that they just feel comfortable guiding customers through this virtual world. So this requires training. This mm -hmm. requires some kind of expertise. Um, and and uh, if the willingness is there and the curiosity is there, then it will work. But we all know that specifically if you introduce IT tools, that sometimes uh, these change processes are, are uh, takes long. And, and, and we have 
underestimated that, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is this is a big challenge. And the third big challenge I touched on, on that already is bringing the 3D three D data into the virtual world. So far, it is was a very um, a very um, costly um, um, process, cost wise. So, so the hours we needed on our engineer, so our engineers, but also. Uh, from, from technology partners. And if you want to make this a standard tool, it must become very easy. Uh, and, and that was also the reason why we are in this kind of re-elevation. Because if you have to spend five digit, to five digit numbers to six digit numbers for transferring a model into the virtual world each time, and you look at our portfolio, you will easily uh, understand that this could not be then a tool uh, uh, for, 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 for the daily life. No? Mm -hmm. But we all also need to understand where, that we are just at the beginning of this um, development and the earlier you start with it, the, mm -hmm. the, the earlier you start with your own le learning curve. Mm -hmm. And we are now at a stage where we most likely will have the, the tests in, in, in two weeks. Uh, so our technology partners are working on some prototypes. Mm -hmm. And the expectation is that we come down with the effort uh, by factors. So uh, from 100% maybe to 10% or even 5%. Mm -hmm. And then we can, also that we can work more or less with real-time data because the connection between the systems mm -hmm. is, is much better than in the past. That's great to hear. So um, you mentioned technology partners, so you work there closely with, with Q. Yeah, Q concept, uh, yeah. Q concept together. Um, and, and there also there's a big uh, ambition to also leverage Microsoft Teams as a communication yeah channel. So yeah. can you maybe a bit elaborate why you see Microsoft Teams also being such an important communication yeah. channel for Google? I mean, this is, this is really a game-changing uh, milestone. Huh? And we saw today this world premiere, <laughs> mm -hmm. not, not a marketing mm -hmm. joke. Uh, in the past, and this was also one of the hurdles why it did not fly in the way we, we wanted to, to bring it uh, into, 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 into heaven, was that for the collaboration part, we needed a different collaboration tool. Why? Uh, the reason is that, that Teams, like many other, uh, other um, uh, collaboration or conferencing tools, they, did not, they, they do not give priority for video or 3D data in the transmission. It's a very technical mm -hmm. thing. So we, we have, and we experience this when the line is not, and the network is not good, we say, okay, we, we shut down our cameras so that we can talk. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. talking has prior one, then video, and then maybe videos you play mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the session. Now imagine you, you spend all that effort and money into your 3D models and into, into your virtual world and every time you then connect via Teams, which, which, which you can do technically, the performance is not good. Right? Then people say, oh, it's, it's not running th smoothly, the details, the, the resolution then that the system gives to you is not good and then, then, this, then, then you create disappointment. Right? And that was the reason why then Microsoft and Q, they started a project to figure out how can we what can we do technically to ensure that in a team session uh, this this virtual world is um, is transferred in a high performing way so that people say wow this is pretty cool and they now did it in a way and this makes it now for us much easier because uh, until now we had a platform so if you want to have a session with us for in the virtual world you go on this on this platform it's also it's also workable but we know how people are every click every click too much is a click too much so but today you go into a portal and into a portal you say i want to have a session a virtual world you fill in uh, the email address of the people you want to invite uh, and then you could also have instant meetings but then you are entering this specific platform the queue people have then built around the virtual world. Now, it would be so much co more comfortable if you, if I could invite you to the virtual world session in Teams where I invite you anyhow, right? mm -hmm. because uh, uh, Teams for us is the most important col collaboration platform. We use it uh, internally. We, we use it with our customers. Uh, and now virtual world becomes integral integral part of it. And this, this is really something where I expect that this will Again, it's a game-changing uh, new functionality mm -hmm. and element uh, to to go to to, to uh, go uh, further with the virtual world. Great. I mean, we're glad to hear that. Oh. Obviously, so um, 
we know, I mean, I know you're in the early stage still with yeah. the Buller Virtual World. Um, would you, can you take a wild guess on the impact you yeah. would see from the Buller Virtual World on, let's say, you know, the, the effectiveness of yeah. your Salesforce? I mean, this is now maybe the Kimmy. <laughs> 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 But imagine, imagine you say, okay, I rethink how I approach my customers. Huh? And when is it really necessary that I go there physically? And what can I do uh, virtually, uh, also virtually when discussing technical details? No? And maybe you say, okay, I can, I can uh, come to a different pattern. And let's say from five meetings where I go today physically, I can stay for one meeting, I can stay in my office and do it virtually. No? Or you say, uh, you say um, how many customers can I call every day and how many customers can I also convince by a cool, by a cool experience I can offer to them. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, just, just imagine it would be, you would be 10% more efficient. Mm -hmm. I mean, 10%, it doesn't sound it's overwhelming, right? mm -hmm. but, but at the end, what, what would it mean? You could do 10% more business without increasing Salesforce, mm -hmm. if you have a direct Salesforce. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, but even more, I mean, we are now following a multi-channel uh, multi uh, sales uh, process. So we also have agents, we have resellers, uh, we have different partners with, uh, which supports us. And also they could maybe use uh, the mm -hmm. virtual world. Oh, another, another aspect, today, today we, uh, we are very quickly, we start with a offering in the offering process. And this means that we start with engineering efforts. And then uh, the majority of offers will not be accepted. So only, only a, 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 a fraction will then turn into, into a, a, uh, yeah, an order from customers. No? Now imagine you could discuss with customers clo more closely on a 3D model or on the technical solution. And so that You start then the engineering process later and your hit rate would increase by 10%. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Or another benefit that you say, okay, because a customer could now visualize in the 3D environment much better than in the past and you could shorten the cycle from the, from the first, let's say, from the first engagement from the first opportunity or first lead until he gives you the order. Maybe today, maybe in some cases, it's maybe be three, between three months, half a year for large, large mm -hmm. projects is maybe even, even longer. And maybe you could be, you could be 20, 30% faster because you have a different kind of uh, interaction and collaboration based on 3D visual uh, models. Mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. Also, that would be a, such a great benefit mm -hmm. uh, And then also, uh, so this is in the pre-sales phase, um, but now imagine also you as a customer, you have given us the order, and now we could give you access uh, into our virtual world, or in, yeah, into, in, into a virtual world uh, where you could follow the build-up of your, of your specific plant, your mill or your die-casting machine, whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, level of trust could we create uh, i mean we are a trusted partner definitely but you could really you could really um, bring the customer much closer into this process also when there are maybe questions you have to discuss with the customer mm -hmm. do we know this way this way that way and you could you could more easily discuss with the customer based on a on a on a model on the, on the real model our engineers are working on i mean that that would also be very very beneficial no? Fantastic. Yeah. Huge potential yeah. uh, I see there and, and I see that you see there. That's the most important. So two more questions. Yeah. Um, what's your vision for the Bühler Virtual World? Uh, this, is, uh, this is easy. <laughs> the vision is that we have a multi-purpose platform and that the communication we do at Bühler is 100% based on the virtual world. The virtual world is our single source of truth. 
uh, multi-purpose, I mean, we not only use the virtual world for selling, but also for training. Ma imagine you have the 3D models in your virtual world. Why not thinking about enriching the content in a way that you could train people? Mm -hmm. Uh, HR, you want to exp you, 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 you have uh, a job uh, applications out there now, people, you have interview processes, why not introduce Bühler, not, not with a few slides, uh, but in the virtual world. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you have services, uh, um, now imagine a service engineer would go to a site, uh, to a customer site, maybe has to do some, some maintenance work. And then, if required, he could he could log into the virtual world and get documentation uh, of of a machine. Uh, I mean, there are so many uh, so many purposes. Uh, not only selling. Um, so, the, my vision is that it's a multi multi purpose um, platform and a multi channel platform. So, you could use this for one 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 to ones. We could have here a computer, and I open it and show you the virtual world. We could have we could bring in with teams, so we could have a hybrid meeting. We could have a hybrid event. We could play these uh, the virtual world uh, on on large screens in a, in a trade show. We could have offline versions for 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 entrance and uh, reception areas, which we already started to do. Um, so multi-channel, multi multi-channel, multi-purpose, uh, and then with the content management system, which is then really the backbone from a content perspective, mm -hmm. so, that, so that you have a single source of truth mm -hmm. for it, and then, and then uh, equipped with the necessary analytic tools so that you also see what's going on. So this would be my... This will be my vision for the virtual world. Amazing. <laughs> sounds uh, sounds uh, very forward thinking and and uh, a modern approach uh, to. And then think about what AI will bring to the table. I mean, exactly. So unbelievable. That, that's my last question. Okay. So I mean, since uh, Christmas twenty two, I think yeah. we all know ChatGPT. We experienced it, which I believe you know changed the world to a certain extent. Um, so now knowing about this generative AI, the yeah. large language models, yeah. uh, in natural language interfaces, what's the potential you see of that technology combined with the Bula virtual mm. world? Now we see it already. Um, we see it already, and we have integrated into into the virtual world uh, the functionality. We have not rolled it out completely in the virtual world, but we have started to do it. Uh, as said, we have linked it to a content management system. Now the content management system is linked uh, to translation systems. So we could offer the content uh, in now 12 languages. And it's, uh, so we, 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 uh, we do the translation in an automated way. So this gives us a completely new approach in regionalizing the content we have in the virtual world. So, and, and this is also already a AI engine behind it for, for mm. translation. Now, <clears throat> but now imagine, imagine uh, we have all this content in the virtual world. Now, how can we make this comfortable and also the experience for people uh, in a way that, this is, that, they, that they feel comfortable, that is also practical. And now we have, what I said, these kind of guided tours, but you could maybe in, in future you could go to the system and have a dialogue you know, like you have with ChatGPT today on this the iphone uh, application has this dialogue function i, I love it yeah? and you could go uh, into the virtual world and you haven't maybe you have an avatar and you ask the virtual world now i'm interested in this and this and that what can you tell me about that and then the the avatar the AI technology behind gives you a first answer and then also maybe guides you through, composes your guided tour based on your requirements. So you say, I'm interested in food, but I would also like to see a little bit of this and this and that. Mm -hmm. what, do you do, what do you do in terms of sustainability? And then the, 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 the AI system says, okay, now I, I, I compose your individual guided tour, wait uh, 10 seconds and then guides you through it. And then at the end, also the AI system says, okay, if you're now interested even more, here are three experts from Bühler, bam, 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 uh, and, and uh, uh, gives you a much better access uh, to, to, the, to, 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 to the company and also to them, to the real experts. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are, these are things which are not, I mean, this is, may sound a bit visionary, but we all know people who are a little bit, a little bit close to the te technology development we know that this will be in two years from now uh, 
it's, it's partially possible today, but you mm -hmm. have to Mm -hmm. do some pioneering work. Mm -hmm. uh, if you see in which speed now these avatar systems are coming up where you can create a little avatar together with a video and mm -hmm. in one or two years this is standard and, mm -hmm. and we can we could bring this into the virtual world and make the content much more applic uh, applicable. So because one, one let's say difficulty we still have is that as a company we are so so large in a way from our portfolio perspective. So what do we do? That if you want to enter the Bühler world, mm. it's not that easy. Huh? Uh, now, if there is a technology which can give you very, very precise access to the aspects of the content world which are relevant to you, this could be really, really mm. comfortable mm. and in a cool experience. Fantastic. Yeah. So very excited. Uh, Niklas, thanks. To, to see where this is going yeah. and uh, with the Bula Virtual World, maybe 3.0 at some time with yeah. Gen AI included. It's fascinating how Bühler is, is pioneering its way through. Yeah. It always has been something that fascinated me as, as your account executive from Microsoft. Thank you. And we're excited to continue the collaboration with you on, on that path. Thank you so much. Nicholas. Thank you, Burkhardt.